Alright, uh, this is a physics video. Um, I know that I usually don't post the sample problems because I don't want you just taking my variables and plugging yours in and I'm not going to be doing that, you know, can continue not to do that. But this one was especially hard just to help people out. Um, a lot of people had questions on number five, the duck paddling problem. Uh, what you have, I think actually this might be number six, not number five, so uh, watch out for that. But anyways, the duck paddling problem. It was really difficult, really, really brutal problem. All right, but first thing you do, as I explained in some of the steps, um, you need to draw either a force body diagram, which, you know, uh, or free body diagram is what I mean to say. And so I have the duck here um, in the center. And then I draw all the forces acting on the duck, where F1 is uh, just that east force they talk about. And I call the, the current of the water. I call that FW, you can call it F sub C, whatever, and that they even give you an angle that it forms, notice how it's south of east. So you draw that and you have to use, again, the force equals mass times acceleration uh, from Newton's law. So we want to break these down into components. F1 is really easy because it's, it's straight horizontal, it's going perfectly east. So it's, its X component is the entire magnitude. It doesn't have a Y component. Why doesn't it have a Y component? Well, is it going up or down? No. And th that's what a vertical component is. And we have to break down the FW, though. That thing's going diagonal. So it has, like, you know, a little horizontal component. It has a little bit of a down component. And use the standard procedure that we you, you'll see in the tool bag. Tool bag. S usually, if, as long as you're given the right angle, the X component is the magnitude times cosine of the angle. The Y angle is magnitude times sine of the angle. All right, so we break that down into components, but what we want to find is they want to know the magnitude of the direction. So, well, how do we find direction? We use our uh, kinetic equations. So direction, or displacement, I should say, is uh, displacement is equal to this thing right here, and you do your little ticks and circles. But we notice that we're given e pretty much everything here that gives the time. Uh, initial position, that's going to be zero, of course. They give us initial velocity. They give us all that, but we don't have A, but the place we get A from is from Newton's law, force equals mass times acceleration. So we have all these forces, and they also give us the mass of the duck. Um, so you have, that's how you have to solve for acceleration. And if you notice a force equals mass times acceleration, well then acceleration equals if you divide by M on both sides. So divide by M on both sides here. So acceleration equals the sum of your forces divided by mass, but you have to be very careful with your components because you have an acceleration in the x direction and you have an acceleration in the, the y direction so you have to keep those split up and you so you know I split those up you end up drawing at like at least like three or four triangles for this question um, you know make sure you do the sum of your forces be careful with your signs uh, typically in class you know we have uh, positive is east negative is west positive is north negative is south so be careful with your signs um, Let's see, uh, this might, yeah, you might dis disregard this, this is wrong. Um, uh, what I, I didn't keep them separate there, which messed me up. Um, so then you have to separate your position components, and this is my horizontal component of my position. And uh, if you notice, you know, there's no initial position, and it does have a V sub zero. Since that V sub zero in the problem is only going east, if you notice it says right here, Velocity of duck is 0.15 meters per second, direction due east, and of course that number will be different for everyone. Um, we only have to worry about the V sub 0 for the X one. If you notice from my displacement in the Y, I just cross out V sub 0 um, because there's no, there's no initial acceleration in the north-south uh, component. So we, we just break components, break components, break components. You need to break your forces into x, y components. You need to break your acceleration into x, y components using you know, Newton's law. You need to break your position into x and y components. Keep those separate. And then you need to, finally, you can say, well, my total displacement is equal to, use Pythagorean's theorem, which you can see, uh, where do I have my, yeah, this is my, I don't have my position triangle. It must have. But anyways, your position triangle would look like this, basically. I actually have it down. There we go. So, you know, notice you notice your horizontal component is your displacement component. This is your vertical, uh, which just happens to be going south. Uh, verti your vertical displacement component. And if you notice, you're using Pythagorean's theorem to get the, uh, the magnitude there. 
that this is the second part of the question, getting that theta. We'll talk about that in a sec. But anyways, it's this really complicated equation. I don't want you to cheat and look at that too long. Um, just, just know that it's, don't, don't just copy this. You need to figure out how to work this. Um, you, uh, and you got to plug in all your constants, which th this is just what's given the problem. They give you mass. Force 1, which is the east force. Force 2, which is that current force, and the angle of the current, and the initial velocity, and the time. That's just the constant they give you. The only thing we had to really solve for was acceleration. Everything else was plugged in. Of course, acceleration was, we said it was force divided by mass, because force equals mass on acceleration. Just easy algebra there. And so I have to plug in all these values to get total displacement. I have to use Pythagorean's theorem. This is just Pythagorean's theorem. I, the way I worked it, I might be wrong. Nothing seemed to cancel out for me. I had to enter this whole thing in my calculator. I could be wrong. This could have been simplified, possibly. I just didn't see it. Um, so that's how you find your displacement vector, you, the magnitude of your displacement vector. The first part only cares about, you know, this. That's like the hypotenuse. So this, this would be a right angle here. So that's your magnitude, which you use Pythagorean's theorem. Then to get the angle, well, look at what we have. We have, here's your hypotenuse, and then this would be your opposite, this would be your adjacent. So how do you get an angle? Well, you use your arc trig functions, like arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent. So, um, and you can use anything you want, because we know what SX is. It's a really complicated thing. We know what SY is. You know your displacement is, uh, you know, it's, it's whatever this long thing solved out to be. But if you take that value and store it in your calculator, you might find it more easy to use sine or cosine. It's really, you can use all three because you have all three sides of the triangles. I tried using tangent. Don't, don't plug this into your calculator, trust me. I, I'm not just saying it because I don't want you to cheat, you know, quote unquote cheat, but uh, I got the wrong answer when I used tangent because um, I made some, I, there's some error here and I don't know what it is. I must have made some, some error entering this in. Uh, I tried sine and cosine, and I got them. It just worked better for me, but uh, there's no one right way to do that. So if you uh, if you found an easier way to do this, feel free to leave a comment or email me. But uh, yeah, this, this is problem number, I want to say six, and uh, really tough. So good luck with this.